It's my 50th anniversary of riding bikes and my 26th of motorcycle adventure. And the other day I got asked a question and it completely stumped me. You've got one bike, Dave, what is it? And this is the bike I chose. Welcome back to the channel, fellow riders. Today, I wanna to share my personal favorite among the fleet of bikes in my garage, the Husky 701. As a motorcycle journalist, I have the privilege of riding the latest and greatest machines every day. But there's something truly special about hitting the road with my mates on bikes that I have carefully chosen and customized for my adventure needs. For those that are new here, I currently own four bikes, all hovering around the same capacity, but each uniquely tailored for different types of adventures. The Yamaha T700, the KTM 690, the Husky 501, and the star of today's show, the Husky 701. This particular bike has earned my utmost respect. At this juncture in my life, and considering what I aim to accomplish, it stands out as my number one choice for the more challenging aspects of motorcycle adventure. Clocking in 14,000 kilometres, every single one of them has been a rugged journey, from forging deep rivers to navigating the fine dust of the outback and relentlessly bashing through the rocky terrains. This is a thorough warts and all review of my Husky 701 and it's three years old and it's copped an absolute flogging in those three years. And if you want to test bikes, I think it's best to test them way past the honeymoon period when they're brand new and after they've had a thorough flogging. And that's what you're going to get in this review. Hi, my name's Dave Darcy and this is Motorcycle Adventure Dirt Bike TV and we do three things on this channel. Firstly, we do thorough motorcycle tests and reviews of the latest bikes to hit Australian shores. Secondly, we do long-form motorcycle adventure movies from all over the world. And finally, and very thoroughly, we do bike builds, and those are episodic, so you can look in detail in terms of how we build those bikes and why we do what we do. So if you like what we do on Motorcycle Adventure Dirt Bike TV, for goodness sake, subscribe. Getting stuck in a mud hole may be a strange way to start a review, but this footage powerfully highlights that weight is not your friend in the tougher end of motorcycle adventure. And this was the number one reason why I chose this bike. Could you imagine wrestling a 200 kilogram plus twin out of this mud hole by yourself? It's not gonna happen. Self-sufficiency is a key ingredient in the mix when talking about tough adventure. The 701 is comparatively light compared to twins, coming in at 150 kilograms. With luggage, it's 175. What would a twin weigh loaded for adventure? Riding across the tropical top end of Australia is tough and certainly isn't for the faint-hearted. When I set out to tackle this challenging terrain, I needed a reliable companion. Enter the Husky 701. Now, let me take you through the journey of transforming this bike into the perfect adventure partner. Right from the get-go, I knew the Husky 701 had to be more than just a machine. It needed to be a conqueror of fine bull dust, deep river crossings and unforgiving terrain. The stock 701, with its robust airbox, thick foam filter and high intake, was a solid foundation for the challenges ahead. Under the hood, the LC4 engine, a battle-hardened veteran born in Dakar, boasted a 1.8 litre oil capacity and an impressive 10,000 kilometre service interval, a testament to its durability. The suspension, though decent, left room for improvement. So bike builds are for a purpose for me, and you've seen my KDM 690, it's absolutely, completely prepared for around the world adventure, but I don't do that very often. Most of my adventure is in Australia. And this bike is a very different build. It's built light. And in fact, over the three years, it's evolved. It's got lighter. When I first built it, it had a full set of pannier racks and it had a big bash plate. And 
you know, I got to thinking, why have I got that bash plate? I never hit anything. I've never cracked an engine case. And that off-road bash plate, the OEM one is fine. And what I do primarily with luggage is I just have light luggage, basically less than or about 15 kilograms for four or weekday trips. And if I want to go heavier, I just simply apply the pannier racks and then, you know, I can up that to, I don't know, 18, maybe 20 kilograms with camping gear and the whole lot. You'll notice the bike doesn't have a tower, unlike the 690. I just get by, I just want this light. So that's an OEM windshield. The only other thing is flipping mirrors, bark busters, rally pegs, and that's it. That's the build of this bike. It's so simple. Oh, one more thing. On the rear of the bike, I've put in a service uh, fuel cap, primarily because if you use that keyed one in the outback, desert get, uh, dirt gets in there, desert dust, and it stuffs it, and you can snap the key off in the lock. So, hence, I've got a, a service a fuel cap on the rear. And apart from that, a snappy little tail rack, not too big, but I can mount everything I want from it. My greatest regret on this bike is not doing the suspension like I normally do. So all I've done is added the correct springs for my weight, and I've got adjustable preload, and that's an X-Trig system where you can just have an eight mil spanner, and you can just adjust that depending on the weight of the luggage you've got on your back. And so the suspension is a little bit hard in that first three centimeters of stroke. It just wears you out, particularly when you're in the outback and you're, you're doing big miles, you know, 400, 500 kilometer a day, it just knocks you about. And that combined with this screen, which is a bit shallow, it hits you, the wind hits you in the shoulders and does this to you. And not much it for three hours, but when you're riding for 12 hours, it knocks the crap out of you. One of the first upgrades was bidding farewell to that heavy OEM muffler. Safety was a priority. The bike falling on you shouldn't result in severe burns. In its place, a lighter, cooler alternative was installed. Time to revisit some dual sport characteristics of the bike. And the best way to do that is seat of the pants impressions. We're gonna move from the freeway to blacktop to twin trail to single trail. So let's go through, you know, if you were going to use this as a true dual sporter and use this in the city and use this as a commuter, the first thing that stands out is the ergos. You sit on this bike, you sit on this like you're riding a horse. And it's, uh, yeah, you, if you're not used to that, it's very, very different. You kind of feel like you're almost over the front wheel. For me, the seat is comfortable, always has been. I can sit on this seat all day, but that's not everyone. And a lot of people replace the seat because they find it just too hard. So for urban commuting, you've got to recognize that it's got a relatively tall seat height and it's a single cylinder. So it bumps along, pop, 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 pop. although it's very smooth and refined for a single. I generally, like I'm in fifth gear now and I'm only doing 60 k's. It's getting a bit jittery now. I'll drop it down. Handy thing about the bike in commuting like this is the quick shifter. And uh, I'm a fan of the quick shifter on this bike, both you know, in suburbia and, uh, and on the dirt. I, it just makes life easy, I think. Now you might say to yourself, oh, well, you you know, you're just riding a big trail bike. Well, it's a trail bike with some pretty good kind of street technology. And the first one is the front brake. Uh, the front brake compared to this and say the 501 is enormous. This is very powerful. This is a very powerful front brake. The traction control on this bike is Amazingly sophisticated but simple to use. It's just straight off the handlebar. It's got two settings. Actually, there's four settings there. You can have track and tr traction control on two different settings, and you can, uh, and then you can uh, take off ABS. So there's a number of different alternatives there. But if I had my choice between this and say 
my T7 at the moment on this sort of conditions the T7 has won hands down and that's the thing adventure is about compromise is this the true Swiss army knife we're off the freeway and on country roads and if there was a happy place for this bike on tar, it'd be country roads. But, you know, we're sitting on about 70 k's at, in fifth gear and we're just uh, cruising along and it does that well. Anything special? Yeah, popping wheelies to get over shit really easy, even in third or fourth. Yeah, so one of my members was saying on his Husky, he's uh, dropped the, the gearing on the counter shaft sprocket by one. And I think that's not a bad idea. Ah, I missed the bait there. The refresher ride on the bike has reminded me of how capable and versatile the 701 is in a wide range of conditions. Yeah, it's not pleasant on the highway or high speed, but it gets the job done. But once it starts getting tougher, the bike's agility and great handling become obvious, and the bike shines. Oh no, I'm in the rut. That's it. Time to talk about the things that have failed or irritate me. The bike has stopped on me a couple of times and I've narrowed it down to the side stand switch. A dumb design for what is a tough off-road bike. A plastic tongue bolted to the side stand has a magnet that needs to align with a sensor on the bike. Two things have happened that have stopped the bike. Either the plastic tongue gets knocked off alignment or, as is common in Australia, small pieces of rock with high iron content stick around the sensor. There are a number of solutions that disable the sensor. I'm not going down that path. At present, I'm keeping it, now knowing how to fix it. I've blown two fork seals, but really that was my fault. I should have been more vigilant to wiping the forks clean after going through that sticky hard mud and allowing it to dry. Shortly before the warranty period ended, the radiator developed a small crack that leaked slowly. The radiator was replaced by Husqvarna under warranty promptly and without any fuss. I have no complaint about how Husqvarna dealt with that, very professional. My biggest irritation continues to be the front suspension. I want that trail feel and I know I can have it because I've got it on my 501 that has been fitted with a KTEC off-road valve system and it's amazing. I don't think I'll be satisfied I've nailed the build of this bike until I have that suspension sorted. I've left the best to last in terms of what gets up my nose when riding the 701 in the Outback, and that's fuel range. This next clip captures the emotion and frustration when you run out of fuel before your destination. If there any time an argument to have a long range 701, uh, this is the time. I run out of fuel, I am I estimate probably 40 k's from Roper River. And uh, anyway, let's see what I can get out of this uh, little bit of reserve I've got now in the in the bladder. <laughs> After all, it is an adventure. If you light on the throttle, you'll get around 250 kilometres out of a 13 litre tank. But fuel quality and octane level can be low in the outback, sometimes reducing fuel range to 200 kilometres. It's just not enough, and you have to rely on fuel bladders, which are a pain in the backside. Well, that's a wrap. As an adventure mount, the 701 does have some shortcomings. But overall, the winning combination of power, lightweight, agility, carrying capacity, comfort, and 10,000 km service interval win the day for me. At my current time in life, where I like the harder form of adventure, this bike answers the call, and this bike is the closest I'm going to get to a Swiss Army knife. Anyway, thanks for watching Motorcycle Adventure Dirt Bike TV. Lots of interesting stuff coming up shortly. 
Now hot off the press, in a couple of weeks Clubby will be attending the international launch of the CF Moto 450 MT in the Philippines and taking it for a spin. A huge interest in this bike in the year of the 450s. We were impressed with the recently released Enfield Himalayan and the return of the Honda CRF 450RL and now another keenly priced 450 is set to hit Australian shores. It's an exciting year for adventurers. Finally, manufacturers are listening with keenly priced small capacity and lighter bikes that make adventure affordable and fun. We look forward to hearing Clubby's first impressions on MAD TV.